Hi Virgo, Happy New Year. Welcome to January 2018. This is Teresa from tarotbyt.com and I'm getting ready to do your reading, your love taroscope for January. And before I do that, I want to call in some good energy for this reading and also for the new year. And I want to say thank you for liking and, and sharing and subscribing to my channel. And thank you for taking the time out to comment. I really appreciate all those comments and I read all of them. And also thank you for um, for those of you who have ordered readings. If you want a reading, just go to tarotbyt.com. The link is in the description and we can get you on the schedule. So let's see what's happening for Virgo for the month of January. We have a full moon in Cancer on the 1st a new moon in Capricorn on the 16th, and then a second full moon that's also an eclipse on the 31st. And that's in Leo, um, which will be in your 12th house. So let's see what the cards are saying for Virgo. What does Virgo need to know about love and relationships? What does Virgo need to know about love and relationships for the month of January? The Ten of Wands. The Ace of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles. Page of Swords. The Chariot, the Hierophant, the Four of Pentacles, the Ace of Wands, the Three of Swords, and the Moon card. Okay, so you've been working really hard um, with the Ten of Wands here. You're carrying this heavy burden. But you're about to put it down and achieve success because you have the Ace of Pentacles here. So um, for some of you, if there's been a relationship that's been on your mind that you've been, something's been, uh, you've been carrying the responsibility for this relationship, um, you're going to finally see results this year, probably the beginning of this year. If not... Um, Probably by spring, you're going to start to see some, um, have a chance for a new beginning. And you may even be thinking about commitment if you're in a relationship, because the Hierophant is about, uh, it could be a marriage card, it could also be a, wanting to do the right thing, wanting to have a, a traditional relationship, traditional situation, not a live-in lover. You may you may want to follow tradition and get committed in in, in a marital type of thing. For others, you might be working really hard on a project, on a career goal, and in that case, um, you're going to start to see some financial support. The Ace of Pentacles is a card of new beginnings where you actually manifest something, where money is coming in. You're going to finally start to see some results. Um, you might be even teaching or teaching your wisdom, sharing your wisdom in some way, teaching, learning, because um, you have this Page of Pentacles. You may have recently, um, this is more of, it's, it seems more like a career reading than a love reading. With the Page of Pentacles, this is the card of the student. And it's the card of being open to learning new things. And so you might have been learning new things that you're willing to, now you want to share your knowledge. Um, it can also represent children. So you might be dealing with one child who's in school. Um, Page of Swords can be a challenging person in your life. Um, so if you're in a relationship, you might be having some challenges with children if you're married and you have children. For those of you who don't have children or are not in a relationship, the page pages can represent messages. So um, if you feel that a relationship has been a burden, you may have to be more open to the other person's point of view with the page. You might not, you know, so you might have to um, be less stubborn, less rigid. You might be dealing with someone who's very stubborn with the, with the Hierophant here. 
the Page of Swords. This is a card of spying, gossip, um, communication, having a difficult conversation. You might have to have some difficult conversations, or you might have recently had, um, to talk to someone with, about something that's been bothering you. And the page is about, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So you have to kind of, you may have had to use, um, be delicate. You might have had to confront someone on a delicate situation. Um, there may have even been some type of separation or hurtful words spoken because there's a heartache card. Like you may have had to, you want to try and patch things up. But you do have the opportunity for a new beginning. Um, but the problem is here... You're trying to control the outcome too much. You have to let. You might have to let go. Um, maybe you've been arguing with someone over money or over petty things. This is a card of holding on too tightly, or not willing to give. Like, this is a card of you have to give to receive. Like, you might be waiting for someone to give to you, waiting for someone to do things for you, but you're not doing. You're not initiating anything. Um, you're just waiting for someone else. So this is a card of let go. Don't play that. Um, well, if I didn't, I'm not calling, they have to call me or, you know, that kind of game. If you feel like talking to someone, you call them. If you feel like seeing someone, you go over and see them. If you want to do something for somebody, you do it. Don't let the giving have strings attached. That's what this card's about. Um, or you could be dealing with someone who's a little stingy, uh, that with the purse strings, like maybe you want to do things and you need money and you need financial support and they're kind of holding the purse strings and they're saying, no, we don't have the money for this or... You may not want to spend the money on certain things. And that can cause some tension in a relationship. The chariot coming up here. Um, this is a card of scattered energy. Um, you might have been um, going in a lot of different directions. And you're trying to achieve a goal. This is a card of victory through focus and discipline. So you want to achieve something stable and secure. But you're going to have to focus on what's really important and leave all the petty, uh, leave all the other things that are not that critical um, by the wayside. Just choose a couple of things that you can really focus your energy on because you're taking on too much with this Ten of Wands. It's like you've been taking on too much, trying to do too much. Maybe you've got so many irons in the fire trying to get money from different sources and you're not really making progress because you're, you're scattered. So you have to kind of focus um, and learn what you need to cut because this three of swords can sometimes mean cutting away what's no longer working so you need to cut out the things that are not um, benefiting you or not showing profit or not showing um, promise and that could be relationships it could be projects that you're working on career friendships um, cut away whatever is non-essential and just focus on the essential you know where do I want to go how do I get there let me just focus on these one or two things that are really important and leave everything else because you can't do it all. You're going to burn out with the Ten of Wands. Um, so you've learned some things and you have wisdom to share. This is a card of sharing your wisdom. This is a card of spirituality. Um, it's the High Priest. It, it represents the Pope um, of ancient times You know where you're, you have spiritual teachings that you want to share with the world. And maybe even um, with the moon card here, you have intuitive abilities or you have, um, so you might be um, wanting to share your knowledge in a, in a way and follow your intuition. The only thing with the, with the moon card is you may not be reading a situation properly. The moon card, there's confusion, there's, there's kind of like you're not seeing all the facts, you're not seeing... You're trying to make a decision with having partial information. So you may be um, overly um, letting your imagination see things in a negative light and they're not really that way. Or you might be over glamorizing something where you're seeing something in a very positive way. So you have to kind of find that balance. Don't go to extremes of either positive or negative thinking. Uh, just be find more of a realistic path and um, that's because the moon um, you might be questioning someone's loyalty are they deceiving me can I trust them um, and it might be just your imagination maybe you're afraid of being hurt with the three of swords maybe they might have hurt you in the past and you're worried about being hurt again 
But with the Ace, if you're in a relationship, um, this card can represent what the person that you're the person that you're with is thinking. And it looks like they want to have a new beginning. They're focused on some new thing, um, and they're excited about it. So um, you're somehow you're doubting that this new beginning has potential. Um, but you do have these two aces here, so I feel like there's a there's potential for new starts and for success, both in career and relationships. You just have to let go of your sorrow, let go of your your hurt. Um, and maybe, you know, it may even mean that you have to, someone needs to apologize or you have to apologize. Words need to be, you know, spoken. Difficult conversations need to be had. And don't try to control the outcome. Just kind of go with the flow. This is a card of, um, if you're not receiving what you think you need, be, it's like be the person that you want, that you're trying to attract. So if you want love, you have to give love. If you want friendship, you have to give friendship. So whatever you're wanting in the world, you have to put that energy out there. That's what this card's about. Um, and then you will see results with this Ace of Pentacles, with these two Aces. You're going to see results. Um, follow your intuition, but don't let your imagination go too crazy. Because you, are, you might be just um, blowing things out of proportion with the moon. So let's look at the astrology, what's happening. Um, you have a full moon in Cancer, and that's ha that's cutting across your 11th and 5th house axis. So there could be some culmination happening with a friendship, within a friendship, with children. Um, maybe you feel like, um, on the one hand, you're feeling very emotional. Um, there's a dream that you really want, or there's some kind of goal that you really want, or friendships that, that are really important to you children that are really important to you and maybe you're feeling that they're not um, giving you what you need there's a coldness because there's Saturn and Venus and Pluto all in your fifth house so you're feeling like that there's too much work I can't have any fun or my children uh, there's something going on I have to be serious I have to be, like you're not feeling the love coming from your children um, there might be power struggles with Pluto there um, so you have to kind of let go. Don't try to control them. Don't try to manipulate them. Just let them be. Let them, let them alone. It's kind of like leave it alone and if it comes back. <laughs> um, now you do have Mars and Jupiter going through your third house and Neptune in your seventh. With Neptune in the seventh, you could be idealizing a relationship, but Neptune can give you a soulmate, but it could also bring, make you be the, um, kind of like the martyr in a relationship. You want to take care of someone um, where, where you're like taking care of someone who's going through a rough time. <coughs> so you just want to make sure that you're seeing the reality of any partnerships you form in, uh, in January. And Jupiter and Mars, Jupiter is expanding your neighbor. You might really want to get out and... Um, Get out into the neighborhood because the third house is the house of communication. You may feel like speaking your mind more. You have Mars there, so you might be a little bit more argumentative. So you want to tone down um, your words. Don't be so... Uh, if It's okay to communicate your, what you need to communicate. But with Jupiter and Mars together, you might be over the top in your delivery. So you want to just... Don't sound like you're attacking someone when you're communicating. You want to be calmer. Um... That's kind of what the energy of Mars and Jupiter in the third. Um, on the other hand, it's a good time to do a lot of research and reading and learn. Uh, and maybe even writing. That might be a way of getting out whatever's, you know, bottling up inside of you. without like. So if you have a conflict with someone, write a letter, but don't mail it. You know, get all your angst out in a letter. Um, but when you talk to them, try to be calm. Don't be so forceful. Um, the new moon will fall in your fifth house. So you can have a new beginning in the middle of January where um, you kind of reestablish boundary, by, uh, you reestablish bonds with your children. Uh, if you have children, you can cement that relationship because there's a lot of Capricorn energy going through that fifth house. Um, and Venus is in the fifth house. On, in, it's connected to the moon. 
Um, so that you could have a really nice time with one of your children at that time. Um, and you feel like, you know, the relationship is getting more stable and in the middle of the month. Um, the other way that that could play out is that you could decide to do some creative work. Venus has to do with art and creativity. Maybe you just need to um, deal with your emotions by doing something creative, honoring your inner child, doing something fun. Maybe you've been all work and no play lately and you need to have some fun. Uh, then we have the full moon eclipse in Leo on the 31st. And for you, that's in your 12th house. That's 12th and 6th house. Um, that's where the focus is going to be. So that's about not being a martyr. It's about confronting psychological blocks. The 12th house is the house of um, the unconscious, our unconscious programming. It's Some people say it's hidden enemies, but most of the time the hidden enemy is ourselves. It's the way we self-sabotage. So you may want to work on either a health issue or um, an employment issue. The sixth house is this house of service. So are you giving too much of yourself in a relationship? Are you being the one who's always sacrificing, always being the martyr, or, you, or are you playing the victim? That's what you have to ask yourself. It's okay to serve, but you don't want to overdo it where you're being victimized. So you have to find a balance there. And it's also a good time um, to confront some of the blockages and release them. The 12th house is a time when you need to release. And full moons, especially an eclipse, is a time of letting go of anything that's unhealthy. Any kind of unhealthy habits, any kind of unhealthy blockages, psychological blocks. It's a good time to confront it, bring it up, and release it. And you can do that with this eclipse. It's a very powerful time. Um, and it may take time. It may not be something that happens overnight because the eclipse energy can last for six months. So you might be working on psychological issues or health issues during, the, you know, getting on a healthier uh, diet or exercise plan or just a healthier frame of mind um, at this eclipse. Because that's, and especially, and Jupiter's in your communication sector, so that's giving you luck there. It's like learning to get you, you're, maybe you need to release um, everything that you've been bottling up for a long time. Maybe you need to learn how to communicate in a more positive way um, so that you can um, come to some type of agreement with people. Um, but you have new beginnings coming up in January. You have potential to overcome certain blockages and to make things better and release, cut away what no longer is serving you and um, honor your inner child, have fun, establish uh, um, strong relationships with your children or establish, um, you know, leave, create something um, that also honors your inner child, like, you know, leave time for fun, leave time for creativity. Leave time for self-expression, whether it's writing or music or, or painting. Even if you don't think you have talent, just to do something creative without any judgment, just to get your feelings out, get your, um, have some fun. Um, that would be good activity to do during January because these houses are being, the way they're being activated. Um, so that's my uh, forecast for January, Virgo. I hope this has been a help to you. And um, I wish you luck and new beginnings and take time out to have some fun this month. And I will talk to you next month and hopefully you'll have a wonderful January. Okay, bye now.